Here at McGill University, our government will invest more than $450,000 over three years in research in a project led by Dr. Mary Ann Hatsapalu. Uh, her work, ladies and gentlemen, is to study the impact of air pollution on the health of people living in urban areas. So what we're doing in a first step, and we did that this summer, is we have our cyclists who are fitted on, who are riding bikes that are fitted with air pollution monitoring equipment that are worth a lot of money, even though they look very small. <laughs> and they are also fitted with GPS unit, helmet cameras, and basically the cyclist and the bicycle become human sensors of their environment. So each morning we left Marianne's office at about eight in the morning and biked for 25 to 30 kilometers until around 10. And afterward, we would upload the data that we collected. So while they cycle around the city, they are actually collecting massive amounts of data on air pollution along different streets. We actually covered about 650 kilometers in, on the island of Montreal. And we looked at air pollution exposure, at air pollution patterns along different streets. We found that the cycling facilities that attract the most cyclists are actually the ones that are the most polluted. And so we're trying to understand well, how can we reduce these levels of pollution. So we use the data we collected and eventually it will lead into a smartphone application where a cyclist will be able to punch in their origin destination and find the least polluted path along their route. Also it will show them the shortest path and the differences in the level of pollution they will encounter so they can make an informed decision about how they want to get to work. Uh, this is a condensation particle counter and basically you have a, a wick, an alcohol soaked wick in here and the air goes in through here and goes through this filter and then it counts the actual number of particles that are less than 0.1 microns. Micron is like one millionth of a meter. So we're building models actually to play around with some fictitious urban configurations. We invent our own urban configurations and we look at how pollution patterns are. What we found is that exposure of cyclists can be minimized by changing slightly their trip. So within one kilometer of an extra cycle distance, you can significantly increase, uh, decrease your exposure. We're hoping that by next June or July, we'll have an app ready. It will be a web-based app, not yet a smartphone application, but it will help cyclists uh, play around with it and identify alternative routes.